Hey Rohan, this is Khaled and in today's video we're gonna go through uh, something that people asking or I found so many comments uh, on my YouTube page and Twitter that uh, everyone is wondering if we will have the ability to run game backups uh, using the new exploit that we uh, like it, then we saw uh, back on June 9th um, which giving the access for the user and kernel uh, through game script application uh, so uh, today's video I wanted to go through uh, the concept and how it, does it really we can do a, this uh, an Xbox game backups and is it really this uh, possible or not so um, until today and uh, the date of this publishing this video there is no uh, Xbox one game disk backups that have been surfacing around or we are aware of so the Xbox system itself uh, has a lot of security measures that preventing that and uh, achieving something like this will uh, definitely had we need to go through a lot of process so we had this article that had been published may uh, back in may uh, 15th and uh, this uh, this article basically going through the concept on how we can dumping the games on on retail so uh, there's no um release uh, planned until the date of releasing this video there's no release planned for something like that but it actually goes through the process of like how uh, on a potential uh, discovery made on the dashboard system os as you can see here the system os uh, 10.0.226213446 utilizing some sort of exploit here for a kerning read write primitive and this goes through uh, the process of making something like dumping games on retail operating system such possible. So I wanted to go through this, uh, like because it's mostly might get uh, people can like get lost in in, in in translation of all whatever is mentioned here. So I want to simplify the things that's like going on through here, so anyone anyone can understand what what's going on here. Uh, so to understand this thing, we need to go uh, first to check how the Xbox uh, security system uh, works. So architecture of the multiple VMware and uh, how what is the defense system that like Xbox team that you're using. So since Xbox 360 and we had all this uh, back in the days, then people was finding a lot of ways to exploit through the changing the firmware of um, of the disk drives trying to drill a hole inside the boards, um, trying to glitch uh, some sort of, uh, using some sort of circuits that need to be soldered in the main board itself, and they can glitch the system. So the Xbox team, security team, had a lot of, you can say, a lot of experience on, on the, the things that they faced back in the Xbox 360, and they tried uh, to avoid all that with the Xbox One release. Uh, so what they done is that we have here uh, the security processor. We have the hypervisor, which is hypervising. Uh, like this is like a layer that it can run uh, isolated or like operating systems, like mainly hosting a lot of virtual machines uh, on the uh, the system. That like mostly common for any operating. I mean, mostly common for the servers or stuff like that. We have the host OS and we have two operating systems that are separate from each other. We have the system OS, which mainly, which basically represent the dashboard system, the UI that you are seeing and all that stuff. And we have the game OS. This is the title OS, which is running the games itself. So we have two separated operating system, which uh, target here is to try to uh, separate these two environments that no one can have access from one to another or something like that so the, the trust even with the hardware inside uh, the xbox hardware it's also uh, like managed it's everything is uh, considered a security risks that's why the xbox security um, team that they try to isolate things make, make sure that everything is like uh, not have this any exploitation or something like that so that's why they're separating both the system operating system which basically uh, allow us to install the applications and all that stuff in, in it all also and the game OS which is running the games and all that stuff so you can see here this is the two operating system the ERA OS and the SERA OS okay so back to this article we can see here 
that uh, there is a service that it's uh, like having the ability to uh, the game OS when once it's booting this is a service there so we have this gaming operating system we have a service there that uh, called comserve host.exe this is initializing the game mount and other additional setups so basically it had uh, it has a call here for something called x card mount so this thing is the entry point that uh, like the research team found uh, this x uh, x card mount they using it instead of x card mount content type meaning that uh, that any type of any content it can be uh, accessed or like can be mounted in that thing not by a content type so from here they can do whatever they can do so if they change the content through some sort of temp drive if we replace it you can see here that if we replace the temp uh, x uh, x xvd so th this is the the file or the, the the format that it's it's reading on the temp partition with the hard drive with the game and loaded the associated license so if we just d done this trick and track the system loaded uh loaded or replaced it with our um, XVD and loaded the, the game license with the other game license uh, files, it will mount. So the, the issue now that they discovered that for, for that part, this X card mount, it's not by the content type, which is doesn't check the content type. So this is available on that firmware version, which is uh, exploit, which is an entry point to exploit the system. So again, if we replace the content inside the temporary partition which is it's like between the operating system and the game os and it mount it can be uh, and of course we need to load the uh, the license associated with the content that we are loading for that game specific game then it can mount and then we can uh, run this game but the issue here also is the uh, how how we can read it and how we can get the license so uh, so how we can read the mount data so we have this uh, some games that using something called LUA uh, this is uh, some some games which such a game that it's like available uh, this game is having some sort of save data and this save data allows the user to decompress and modify the script directly. So some sort of games that are available using the LU, uh, L, uh, LUA uh, type, allowing the execution of scripts inside this game. So if you have uh, this um, type of games that using this technique, we can access the, con the content. I mean, we can uh, access the content uh, storage but briefly as mentioned here it's mentioned that like it can do a code execution on the system os okay so there is some some uh some something called uh, x card you tell that we can access the content storage and from there we can do the uh running the, the scripts to do this all that stuff okay so we had the, the place to uh, replace the 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 xvd we have the uh that the place we can run the LUA uh, save files. Now, what about the license? So we have two types of license. We have uh, for digital games, we have a cached license. And for the disk game, we have uh, th this license is uh, cached. Only uh, this disk, uh, disk based game, it's uh, just currently cached. So it's it doing a caching once we load this game from disk. And then this uh, caching, removing the, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it got removed. So it's only for the, uh, the, uh, the, the time that you are playing or running the game itself. So both, it's, uh, both uh, license type running in, in, uh, or the, the license itself going through a, a pass called uh, S, clip, uh, asterisk, whatever means that's all this file.xml. So all these associated licenses ins inside uh, coming there. So as I mentioned here, we have the disk-based games, which containing the license, which is only loaded when you're inserting the OOD, the ODD. And this is unloaded after the game exits. So it means like it's only getting some sort of caching, okay? And the other one is already cached, which is for the digital games. So we have the, all the digital games. We have all this, uh, this license are the cached, are primarily as digital, digital games. I mean, primarily digital, but these are only just like loaded once we insert uh, the disk drives and then uh, it's like got deleted. So we have 
a service called Microsoft Xbox Security, Security Club, uh, which uh, pretty straightforward. I mean, if we can take uh, take some call from that, uh, I mean, we need only one function from there to try to get the license. Okay, so once we get this license, so we have the license, and we can replace this uh, partition with the. Uh, I mean, we can replace the content with the content of disk. So we have the license for the, that game. So that's it. We can launch the game, which is using the LUA uh, saves, and then we can execute. Then once the game is loaded, mounted to the drive with this game OS, from there we can abuse the save data and run our own LUA, uh, LUA, uh, LUA code. So we replaced and we had the license and now we can put our uh, exploited disk uh, to load some sort of save which will trigger the LOU uh, code. Okay, so as I mentioned before that Microsoft made it uh, not possible to have any uh, accessibility or like anything accessible to the XVD. Okay, meaning that there is no USB drives or something can access this thing too. So how we can uh, mount uh, this 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 uh, this this files? So um, there is no USB drives accessible to XVD and mounted. So instead of uh, mounting, we can send the file through a socket to the host PC. So we can do like some sort of uh, uh, opening a port and that like listening to that 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 device and we get. And we start to do the uh, like sending this uh, data over the socket from uh, to the host PC, so we can try to extract uh, this this information from uh, the the device. With that, we can do the backup of these games, so we can have access to get the license and get the data from uh, a socket over the host through the host PC. So uh, this is this is mostly the process of how we can backup game. It's not about running the games now. This is only for backuping the games. Uh, through this uh, firmwares, we see that there is an exploitation that it, it's happening by replacing the places that we can do. We can get the license and we can execute our uh, information through the L, uh, LUA save files. And uh, the mystery here is uh, two things. The first thing, um, what what is the game that like using what is the games that are using the LUA's uh, f sort of files? Second thing, is this uh, like some 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 planning of this to be planned to be released or uh, will it be released at any 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 point of time? So the, the answer for the second question we don't know. I mean, uh, the Xbox One research uh, team might release this thing might not release this thing but they got uh, they give uh, like a technical overview of how the things works but we hope that someday we can see something like that we can can see the light and we can start do our own dumping for these uh, for our games that we are we owning or like backing the discs that we have and uh, the, the the answer for the first question i'm, I'm getting in reversed is which games that might uh, be involved or like uh, having the ability to running the lua um, or having this LU8 save file types that we can run the, ex the script executions. So we can see here that Emma on her uh, Twitter mentioned that like for people interested in using technique described in the blog post, I was told to relay uh, to relay the following. Okay, so she mentioning that there is one game called Warhammer uh, Vermin Tide, Vermin uh, Tide Two, any edition for like disk or digital uh, you can uh, it's running or using the LUA um, uh, save type that it can execute uh, that we can like execute our our our, um, our uh, scripts on it and there is one also one game for the series S and X this is a series S uh, and X exclusive called uh, Dark Tide okay might also work but is a series S and X exclusive so I went ahead and grabbed a copy of um, Warhammer Vermintide. The DLX edition was in sale on Walmart. Um, so yeah, uh, we can, I mean, if you get a chance to find this game, you might uh, grab it, just keep it, maybe something will 
uh, hopefully really soon and we can use it for using the L LUA uh, inside uh, the game saves that's inside this uh, to run the scripts uh, required for um, doing the dumping of uh, the games so thanks guys for sticking in uh, for the whole video uh, I hope I was able to deliver the message or like go through how things work for dumping the games or the proof of concept of dumping these games on Xbox uh, currently on this set of firmwares uh, so yeah uh, if you like my video please leave a like share and if you didn't subscribe please do so it will help a lot and see you guys in the next one bye for now